What's going on everybody? My name is Dr. Eli and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the new DAT scoring method. Recently, I held a live stream on YouTube and TikTok and someone asked me, now that the DAT scoring method is changing from being out of 30 to being out of 600, what DAT scores should I be aiming for? I thought that was a great question because I know that the DAT scoring system changed recently on March 1st of this year and I figured I should make a video to explain the scoring changes for all the pre-dents out there and kind of talk about what score you should be looking at trying to get and how the old scores compare to the new scores on the DAT. So before we get into the video, my name is Dr. Eli and I'm a graduate of the Boston University Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine and an incoming orthodontics resident at Indiana University. On this channel, I took everyone through my dental school journey and now I'm getting ready to take everyone through my residency journey and my journey as a practicing orthodontist. This channel is your one-stop shop for all things when it comes to getting into dental school, navigating dental school, applying to residency, or just learning general information about dentistry. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the videos, comment under the videos, etc. Speaking of residency, one thing I'm looking forward to about residency is being able to wear whatever scrubs I want. I've been exploring different scrub styles and I recently got a pair of scrubs from this company called Degachi and I'm wearing them right now. I like these scrubs because they're a bit looser fitting. In my younger days, I liked that figs look with the jogger scrubs, but I'm moving a little bit away from that now that I'm getting older. So I'm going to be trying to throw these Degachi scrubs into my rotation during residency because I have so many scrubs and I could switch it up a lot, I figured I would try some new stuff. Anyway, let's get into the content of today's video. So beginning on March 1st of 2025, the ADA's Department of Testing Service implemented a new scoring system for the DAT, the Dental Admissions Test. They claim that this new scoring system will be a more accurate representation of how people perform on the exam. I'm not necessarily sure about the nitty gritty and how exactly changing the scoring system will do this, However, from looking at a comparison of old scores compared to new scores, I can kind of see what they're getting at by changing the scoring method. According to the ADA, this new scoring method will be better at assessing a candidate's readiness for dental school. Of course, we all have our own thoughts and feelings about whether one standardized test can tell people whether someone is ready or not for dental school, but this video is not here nor there. Let's talk about the scoring changes and how your old scores look compared to the new scores and what score you should be shooting for. So the old DAT was scored on a scale of one to 30. To be honest, I didn't even know you could score less than 10. However, according to this document, the scoring range was one to 30. The new scoring range is actually going to range from 200 to 600. So the scores are gonna sound a little more like those MCAT scores. And I guess they're also trying to kind of make things seem a little more cohesive. So if you take the DAT any time after March 1st, 2025, your score will be reported in this new three digit scoring system from 200 to 600, period. If you took the test before this date, you will be able to see your score in the old format, which was just one to 30, but you can also request an update to see your scores in the new format, and that'll be your way of easily telling what your old score means compared to the new scores. Now, where people are starting to get mixed up a little bit is if we already knew that accepted students have certain numbers that they're getting on the DAT to get them into dental school, how do we know what to shoot for now that there's a whole new scoring method? And honestly, I would say you should be looking at basically the old scores on the new table. So if you go to the IDEA Dental School Explorer or whatever forum that you're getting your information from that's telling you the scores of people that go to the school that you're trying to go to, take those old scores and use it on this new scoring method. This document I pulled straight from the ADA website provides a table that compares the old scoring method to the new scoring method for every single section on the DAT. I'm gonna pop the table in here so that we can go over it together as I read it for the camera. So what you'll notice is on this table, on the left side of the table, they list the old scores from one to 30. On the right side, they list the new scores but it's different per category on the DAT. So to take an example, one thing you'll notice, a 15 on the old DAT, academic average of 15 would be a 330 now. However, if you got a 15 in the section of organic chemistry, 
that would be a 350 in the section of organic chemistry. There's a little bit of fluctuation of what the old score is compared to the new score, and it definitely varies by category. So one thing I can say straight off the bat is if you want a good chance of getting accepted into dental school, you need to be shooting for an academic average of 20 or above. According to this table, an academic average of 20 would be a score of 420 on the new DAT. I would also say as a baseline, you want to get a score of 18 or higher in every section. I think that will set you up really well for dental school. And in that case, your new score should be academic average of 390, total signs of 400. I've also noticed that on this chart, they changed it to say SNS, which is Survey of the Natural Sciences, which is kind of like how the MCAT rates their scores. So Total Science, which is now Survey of Natural Sciences, score of 400, Bio score of 390, General Chem score of 400, O Chem score of 400, PAT score of 390, Quantitative Reasoning or Math, score of 400 and a reading comprehension score of 360. Now one other thing I noticed is that it seems that the reading comprehension scores are much lower compared to what they used to be. I don't know if they determined that the reading comprehension section was one of the easier sections on a DAT and so they dropped the scoring rank a little bit or whatever it might be. But what you'll notice is that even with a 30 in reading comprehension, you cannot get a perfect 600 in that section. However, you can get a 600 in every other section on the DAT. I wonder why they did that. Of course, just judging off of this one table, it's hard to give an arbitrary number, especially considering we don't have any statistics on these new DAT scores and what people are getting in with. However, if you want my personal advice, compared to old DAT scores and to this new scoring method, I'm willing to take a good guess that a 440 or 450 is the score that you want to reach for in every single section and will set you up very, very well for getting into dental school. So this document also provides percentile ranks for the new DAT scoring method. Now, as we all know, percentiles work. 50th percentile means you're right in the middle of the pack. Obviously, if you want a good chance of getting into dental school, you want to be above that 50th percentile. And according to this table, being above that 50th percentile would put you right at about a 400 score, which is right in the middle of the 200 to 600 range. Now, as you can see, as it gets higher and higher, the percentiles get harder and harder. So when I said a 440 to a 450, that looks like it would put you right around the 80th percentile in every section which is great but look at how hard it is to jump from the 80th to the 90th percentile 440 being 81 percentile in the academic average but 470 puts you at 91. so my guess is that a lot of these new dat scores that people are getting are going to range somewhere between 400 and 500 and in my opinion that would compare to the old scoring range of 17 to 23 which I would say is right around the 50th to 90th percentile of the old DAT. So all in all, whether you're a pre-dent, a dental school advisor, um, or someone who claims to offer help to pre-dents, knowing this new scoring system is integral in helping people decide whether they should take their test again, how they should study for their test, what scores they should look for compared to what we've seen in the past. And if you're interested in reading up all about the new DAT scoring methods. This PDF I actually pulled from the ADA website and it's just called Understanding the New Dental Admission Test Score Reporting Scale. If you go to ada.org slash DAT, you should get access to it. The document is pretty short. It's only a five page read with two full pages being tables. So it does leave a lot to guess. But judging from my experience with the DAT and my past four years in dental school and advising different pre-dental students all the time, I think that this is pretty solid information that I'm giving you in this video, and I hope that you can take it and use it and apply it so that you know where you stand when it comes to applying for dental school. That's all I have for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you got some good information from this video and you learned something. Please, please, please make sure you subscribe if you watched all the way to the end of this video. If you're interested in dental school or in residency or just seeing the life of a dentist, this is the channel for you, so make sure you subscribe. That's all I got for today. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. I got a guess in the back of my ring and I went and tried it. I told her she got to run to the team before she can talk to the lit.